Hello, my name is Anmol Porwal, and I will be giving a talk on Interleaf Prongo, a new generic decoder for interleaved codes. This is a joint work with Lukas Holzbauer, Hidong Leung Liu, Julian Renel, Antonio Wachtetze, and Violetta Weger. This is the outline that I will follow. First, I will give an introduction to what uh, interleaving is, and and also explain the motivation behind looking at uh, generic decoding of interleaved codes. Then in the second section, I will actually look at the various ways of doing uh, decoding of interleaved codes. And uh, uh, here I will also explain a new such uh, decoder called interleaved pranga. And then in the third section, I will compare the various approaches. Okay, so first some motivation. So as we know, the McLeese system is a very promising candidate for post-quantum cryptography. However, it has a very, uh, one very serious drawback, which is its large key size. So the question is, how can we improve on this? Now, the security level of the Mikuli system is determined by the error correction capability of the GOPA code that we are using. And this is something that we can increase if we use a larger GOPA code, or in other words, a larger key size. However, if you are able to increase the error correction capability of the GOPA code while keeping the key size or the size of the copper code the same, then what this means is that uh, to achieve the same security level, we will be able to use a copper code of a smaller uh, smaller size. And uh, it, to do this, there have been various ways uh, that have been proposed, uh, for example, using a list decoder for the copper code uh, or uh, using uh, or another technique, which is called interleaving. And this is what I will uh, describe next. So uh, first, what interleaved codes are. Uh, so uh, an interleaved, an L interleaved code word. So ma mathematically, it is very simple. Uh, what you have is uh, uh, you take a constituent code C, and from it you take any L code words and you put them, or you concatenate them together. So you can imagine putting them in a matrix uh, as depicted here. And this w one entire matrix is then one L interleaved code word. And then you can um, imagine uh, putting all such matrices or uh, to get uh, all such possible matrices uh, in a set and this entire uh, and this now set uh, would be an L interleaved code. So now uh, let me try to uh, explain why it is interesting to look at this construction. Uh, so uh, let's say this is an L interleaved code word. Uh, and let's assume it has some uh, some errors in it, and uh, let's say all these errors are confined to exactly t columns. So in other other words, this uh, this uh, matrix has exactly t column errors. Now it turns out that for certain codes, there are interleaved decoders that can correct a lot of uh, column errors. Um, and uh, in fact, this uh, this number. Uh, the, the number of er column errors that these uh, interleaved decoders can correct is uh, uh, generally much larger than the unique decoding radius of the constituent code. Uh, and in fact, it can be quite close to the minimum distance of the constituent code as well, as long as the interleaving order is not too small. So uh, what this means is that uh, you can correct a lot more column errors uh, than the uh, than the error correction capability of the constituent code that you're using uh, with interleaving. Uh, and in particular, such decoders also exist for interleaved copper codes. So based on this idea, we can now construct interleaved crypto systems. And uh, the way this would work is that uh, Bob would, instead of encoding just one message, he would encode L messages. And, uh, and after encoding these L messages, he gets L code words, which he can put them in a code word uh, in, in a matrix, uh, and uh, this is what we can call the interleaved code word. Uh, now he can, uh, more mathematically, he can have his messages uh, as the rows of some matrix, capital M, and he can directly multiply it with the generator matrix G to uh, get this uh, get this interleaved code word, uh, capital C. Now uh, to generate the ciphertext, he would then take uh, the code word uh, and then add an error matrix to it, which has exactly t non-zero columns. So after addition, he gets his ciphertext uh, capital R, and then he can send R to Alice, uh, and then she can decode this received R using an interleaved copper decoder. 
Um, now, uh, note that the generator matrix here is exactly the same as in the non-interleaved uh, case. So what this means is that the key size remains exactly the same here. Uh, however, because we are using an interleaved code, uh, what this means is that the uh, the number of uh, column errors that we can add to the codeboard matrix is uh, uh, is uh, generally going to be much larger than the error correction capability of the constituent Godwood code. So what this suggests is that interleaved crypto systems might help us achieve a smaller key size. Now, uh, this is a table from a paper that looks at uh, what kind of key reductions that we can possibly uh, uh, get by using interleaved crypto systems. Um, and if you look at the rightmost column, you can see the, the different uh, key sizes you can get by using uh, interleaved and non-interleaved uh, approaches. And the ones, uh, the key sizes that are achieved using interleaving are in bold. Uh, and as you can see, the the the, the key size reductions are very significant, um, and I think they are about from 20 to even 40 percent. So, um, assuming uh, interleaved crypto systems are secure, then this means that they are uh, they provide a very good way of uh, of uh, reducing uh, the key size of the of the Michaelis system. Uh, but uh, in order to be sure of that, we need to understand whether interleaved crypto, system or crypto systems are indeed secure. Uh, and to do that, we need to look at the hard problem that they are based on. So one might uh, state the hard problem uh, as it is given here, uh, which we call the interleaved decoding problem. Um, and uh, if you, uh, you will see that this is very similar to the a general decoding problem that we are familiar with, uh, except the difference is that here we actually have a received matrix R, um, and and uh, what we want to d determine if is if there is an error matrix E that has column weight uh, that is at most T, um, and um, yeah, so this would be uh, the hard problem, and we want to look at how difficult or how uh, how much work it is to to um, solve this problem. And this uh, leads to uh, one of the uh, goals, of, one of the main goals of this talk, which is to understand uh, the complexity of doing generic decoding of interleaved codes. Um, and because uh, to, this is important, as we just uh, discussed, to assess the security of interleaved crypto systems. And in addition, this is also um, important just from a coding theoretic perspective. Um, the reason for that is. Uh, uh, so it, it turns out that when the interleaving order is at least as much as uh, the number of uh, column errors, then it, it turns out that there are indeed efficient decoders uh, for arbitrary linear constituent codes. Um, so, uh, so, but this is not true when L is much smaller than the number of uh, uh, number of column errors. So, so it is also interesting to see. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, how uh, what kind, how efficiently or uh, w how efficiently we can decode uh, when we are in this parameter range, and because uh, as I just mentioned that um, L uh, if uh, L is at least the number of column errors, then there are then you can efficiently decode regardless of which code you're using. Uh, regardless of which constituent code you're using. Uh, this also means that interleaved crypto systems are designed, uh, are always designed with, uh, with an interleaving order L that is much smaller than T. Uh, and therefore, uh, in this talk, what we're what we considering is a generic decoding of interleaved codes when the interleaving order is uh, much uh, smaller than T. Uh, and in addition, we will also be looking at uh, I will also explain a new such generic decoder, which we call uh, interleaved pranga. Okay, so now I will explain the uh, various ways of uh, performing decoding of interleaved codes. And I will describe three algorithms here. The first uh, type, uh, which I call SD-based, uh, will uh, reduce the interleaved decoding problem to the classical central decoding problem. And so here, then, we can use any of the uh, well-known algorithms that solve the SD problem. Uh, the second type of algorithms reduce the problem to a low-weight code-finding problem. And finally, the third algorithm uh, I will explain is uh, interleaved pranga. 
So uh, just as a reminder, uh, this is our setup. Um, uh, C is uh, our our codeword matrix that consists of L codewords from the constituent code, and then we have an error matrix E, which uh, consists of T non-zero columns, um, and then we form the receive word by adding C and E, um, and which we call, then call R. So the goal is that given R, we want to figure out what the T what the T uh, original error positions are. Um, and uh, now before I proceed, uh, let me also uh, just mention that we will be uh, uh, content with finding just a subset of the original T error positions. So, so, uh, so um, even if the algorithm doesn't return all the T error positions, but only a subset of them, we would still consider that a success um, because, um, because once you know some of the uh, error positions, then uh, the problem becomes exponentially easier. Okay, so the first type are the SD-based algorithms. Um, and here the idea is that you uh, just, so you, you're given a received matrix R, and what you do is you just pick, uh, uh, pick any uh, one row from it, and this row is going to contain uh, some, uh, some error of weight at most t. And then you can just try to solve the, this resulting syndrome decoding problem using any of the uh, any of the uh, known algorithms uh, that solve this problem. Uh, and now, uh, uh, in general, you don't actually uh, you can also take any linear combination of the rows of R, uh, and uh, in any such uh, any non-zero such linear combination will also have an error of weight at most t. Um, so this would be. Uh, uh, pretty much the most straightforward and I, I guess the obvious way of uh, solving the interleave decoding problem. Um, and uh, and uh, so uh, since information set decoding tags are one of the best known algorithms to solve uh, the, the SD problem, uh, we therefore call this approach random ISD, where ISD can be Pranga, Stone, uh, etc. And uh, the, the reason to uh, describe or propose uh, such such a type of uh, type of uh, algorithm uh, is because uh, this can set a very reasonable benchmark to compare other proposals that compare uh, that that perform decoding of interleaf codes. So uh, so the uh, so if uh, you pro if you're proposing uh, a, a decoder for interleaf codes, then hopefully it will at least beat uh, beat a random ISD. And now, uh, in particular, we can look at random pranga and, uh, and do the analysis to figure out what is word factor and success probability should be. And this is possible, uh, so this is what the expression uh, would look like. And similarly, you can do so, uh, derive an expression for random stone as well, uh, which has a, a, a quite a bit more complicated expression. Uh, but, but yes, but, that's, uh, uh, but you can also do it uh, for that. The second type of algorithms are the CF-based algorithms. And to understand uh, these, uh, note that the code generated by um, uh, the concatenation of G and the received matrix R, so let's call this G prime, is, uh, is exactly the same code as generated by uh, the concatenation of G and the error matrix E. So what this suggests is that uh, the the there are uh, uh, that the code spanned by G prime contains low weight code words that are uh, that are from the span of the error matrix. So in other words, we can uh, uh, in order to solve the interleave decoding problem, we can uh, run a low weight code finding problem on the on the uh, on this uh, generator matrix G prime. And, uh, and so, for example, one can use the Stone's algorithm to solve this problem. Now, um, I should also mention that, uh, in, in a sense, uh, CF-based algorithms can be considered as uh, one of the best uh, algorithms to solve uh, the interleave decoding problem, uh, so that they have uh, generally the best complexity. Uh, and so uh, it would be uh, interesting to see how these compare uh, with uh, interleave pranga which I will now describe next. I will explain interleave pranga by, uh, with the aid of this picture. So, um, so first we have the original generator matrix G, 
and to this we append the uh, the receive matrix R and form this large k plus l cross n size matrix so just like as in the cf based uh, uh, algorithm and uh, now let's also assume that all the errors are in the red highlighted area as you see in the picture um, and uh, now one uh, iteration of interleave Franga consists of uh, first picking uh, uh, k plus l columns from this large matrix uh, so let's assume that uh, those k plus l columns are uh, the represented by the blue highlighted area and uh, and uh, so in fact this is uh, these k plus l columns actually forms a square uh, sub matrix um, and uh, and what we do is we check whether this uh, sub matrix is uh, rank deficient or not now uh, to uh, understand why we want to uh, well, why we want to do this check um, let, let's assume that one of the uh, rows here in the blue part is completely error free now if, if this is the case then uh, clearly this uh, blue sub matrix is uh, going to be ranked deficient because this uh, error free row is uh, clearly a linear combination of the top part uh, here a linear combination of some of the rows of, of in this top part. Um, so, uh, and once uh, you realize that, uh, then you can do something uh, similar as in uh, as in the original Franco's algorithm to determine what the uh, what the corresponding error-free code word here should be for for, the, for this entire for this entire row. And then if you can if you subtract that uh, that found code word from this row, then you can figure out what the error position is, what the error positions are at least in this row uh, and therefore you will find a subset of the t original error positions um, uh, and now in addition uh, uh, even if uh, uh, so let's say like uh, let's say none of these rows are completely error free in the blue part but it so happens that some linear combination of these rows are completely error free then even in this case uh, this is going to be uh, completely uh, this is going to be ranked deficient and therefore you will be able to determine or uh, determine uh, <clears throat> that there is a, some linear combination of these rows uh, which is completely error free and then therefore you will uh, be able to um, figure out a subset of the t original error positions so uh, this is how um, uh, the this is the basic idea of interleave uh, pranga and uh, uh, and the uh, the thought here is that because uh, just by doing this one simple rank check we are able to uh, immediately uh, or easily check whether any uh, uh, whether any linear combination of the rows of this uh, is uh, uh, is error free in this blue part or not and uh, and so one might think that uh, this uh, would give it a very favorable uh, success probability. So this is what I just described but in, uh, in textual form and in a bit more detail. Uh, and now you can uh, do the analysis for interleave Fraga and try to figure out its success probability and its cost of one iteration uh, and, which, and then you can figure out its overall work factor. And, uh, and these are what the expressions uh, uh, end up looking like. Um, so, um, yeah. <clears throat> now uh, we move on to comparing these uh, different uh, these different approaches. Uh, so we will do an asymptotic comparison of the various algorithms that we just saw. Now, before I proceed and show you the plots, uh, I wanted to uh, mention uh, some things about the interleaving order. Um, so the first thing is uh, the larger the interleaving order, uh, the better uh, the error correction capability of the interleave decoder. Now uh, generally in practice what this means is that the interleaving order L shouldn't be too small. As long as it's uh, reasonably large, so for example uh, f for uh, many of the published uh, parameters uh, L is typically 7. Then t will reasonably be very large. Uh, so, sorry, the error correction capability of the interleave decoder, which uh, is t, uh, will be reasonably large and would be close to the minimum distance of the constituent code. Uh, and uh, in addition, we don't want l to be uh, 
too large and uh, in particular it shouldn't be larger than uh, the number of errors um, because it turns because as I mentioned previously uh, this uh, case can in fact be efficiently decoded uh, and therefore uh, for, for the purposes of cryptography we do want uh, L to be much uh, smaller than T so there needs to be uh, so in general we do want L to be pretty small uh, but uh, not very very small because we also want um, uh, a, a good error correction capability so there needs to be a bit of a balance here okay so uh, uh, so here I, uh, uh, we are comparing uh, the asymptoting cost of the different algorithms. So we have here interleaved pronga, random pronga, random strewn, and finally the CF-based algorithm, which is, uh, 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 which is using uh, Stone's algorithm to do the low-weight code word finding. Um, now, uh, uh, now uh, except the CF-based algorithm, all of these are technically upper bounds to the uh, true uh, to their true cost but um, uh, so and the reason we are using uh, these upper bounds is because it's uh, much more uh, uh, easier to compute however we do have uh, good uh, numerical evidence to think that these upper bounds are actually quite close to the true value so we can think of these as uh, as a uh, indicative of how, how they actually perform uh, in in, uh, in reality. Um, so uh, if you look at the graph you will see that generally uh, um, the CF-based algorithm is the best uh, except uh, in for very low rates where interleaved pranga seems better uh, and uh, both interleaved pranga and uh, uh, the CF-based algorithm are better than random pranga and random stern. Um, so this is uh, for L equals to uh, 1 20th of t. Now if we are willing to make L a bit larger then it seems uh, that interleaved pranga is actually uh, uh, now seems performing uh, quite a bit better uh, uh, and if we are willing to make L e a bit more uh, even more larger so here it's about 20 percent of t then uh, generally interleaved pranga is uh, actually uh, uh, quite a bit better than uh, than the CF-based algorithm, except at uh, at high rates. And uh, this is uh, a table showing the worst case as asymptotic exponent uh, of the plots that we just saw. Uh, so in the second and third rows, uh, you can see, uh, so this is for uh, L equals to T over 10 and L equals to T over 20. Uh, we can see that uh, 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 that the CF-based algorithm is better than interleaved Frango, uh, but when uh, L is T over five, so uh, so about uh, so qu so quite a bit uh, larger than uh, the other two uh, uh, other two values for L, uh, then uh, interleaved Frango does uh, perform um, uh, better than uh, C uh, than CF uh, CF using Stern. Okay, so now I will uh, conclude my talk. So we looked at how uh, interleaved crypto systems can be a very promising variant for code-based cryptography and how they can uh, help in reducing the key size. Uh, we looked at uh, different ways for performing generic decoding of interleaved codes. And in particular, we looked at a new algorithm called interleaved pranga. Uh, interleaved pranga, we saw, uh, asymptotically beats CF-based Stern uh, in certain parameter ranges. Uh, now, CF based Stern, as I mentioned, uh, is uh, can be seen as one of the best uh, uh, decoders for interleaved uh, for interleaved codes so far. So the fact that it actually it beats it in certain parameter ranges uh, is uh, uh, is a uh, good uh, gives us good reason to think that interleaved Ranga is uh, is potentially a very competitive uh, interleaved decoder. Uh, and in addition, uh, the technique that is used in interleaved Franga, uh, where we check the rank, might also be uh, applicable to decoders other than Franga. But that is uh, something for uh, future investigation. Uh, so that uh, brings me to the end of my talk. Uh, thank you for your attention.